Hi, I'm Peter. In this video, I want to talk about what it takes to import heavy machinery from China. In my case, we will be talking about CNC milling machine. This video will be taking place in Portland, Oregon, so keep in mind that any quotes listed here will be related to this location. Also, I want to point out that this is for a complete beginner at importing anything. Back in December, I officially started my company called Shepping Inc. My key product will be a smart bed. If you're interested to learn more, I've included a link to my website below. After doing some research on what would be the most economical way of building the bed, I quickly realized in order for me to get started with my product, I need to get one of the most essential machinery, which is a 4x8 CNC router. When I was doing my research, I couldn't find much information, so I decided to make this video for others. I started off by looking at used machine in my category. As you can see, even the used CNC was way out of my budget. But as I dig deeper, I found three competitors in the US that matched my budget. The first one was Industrial CNC. Their machine was very competitive, however, the price was a little out of my reach. Here's a complete list of what it offers. Second one was Avid CNC. Even though it looked like a really good price, however, later I followed up with the clerk and he admitted that this is not all I needed in my package. In the end, this machine was less quality, but also costed about the same. And lastly, I want to talk about Zanbot CNC. This one stood out the most to me. The size and specs is mostly what I needed. However, I really doubted its precision and quality. Before I committed to buying a machine, I also looked into having someone else build the wood parts for me. Unfortunately, the quotes I was getting were in upwards of $10,000. Fortunately, having some experience in programming and operating CNC helped helped me commit into buying one for myself. As I was doing my research, I knew the size I needed, but the biggest challenge was to get everything I needed to get started for under $10,000. This was not easy, especially trying to find something in the US. So I settled on ordering one from China. After examining all the specs and comparing them to similar units in the US, all either met or exceeded their expectations. But with much skepticism and doubt, I finally decided to take the risk. I settled on the model called SDM1325 from Style CNC. There are many different companies in China that build very similar machines. However, Style CNC had the best value and great customer service. I went with the most basic option, which did not include vacuum hold down, automatic lubrication, or mist cooling. I did, however, added a dust collector, which was $200 value. So my total overall with the C shipping came out to about 5,960. I did, however, get a discount, but I'm not gonna mention it since it really depends on your negotiation skills. I placed my order on January 27th with the required 30% down payment. They preferred a bank transfer, but to be safe, I asked them to take the transaction to Alibaba. I was much more comfortable paying with credit card through Alibaba for redundancies. Should anything go wrong? Alibaba, however, did take an additional 3%. Soon after a couple days, the factory closed as the new virus began to spread, so I ended up having to wait 6 weeks before shipping took place. Despite all that, the company remained in contact with me to answer any of my questions and kept me up to date on the progress. All communication was over WhatsApp. It was a convenient way for me to ask questions and for them to share pictures and videos I requested. On March 14th, I was contacted to make the remaining payment. And on March 20th, it was packaged and shipped from China. On March 30th, my container was picked up and I was able to closely track it using ship tracking app. My container was on the ship for three weeks and arrived on April 19th. I also requested for packing pictures. That's when I realized all the accessories that came included. Since this was my first time importing from China, I didn't realize that prior to shipping I needed to find a licensed broker who would handle the import documents. This is a very important step and needs to be done before the shipping starts. All documents need to be signed 48 hours before the container is loaded onto the ship. Luckily, Style CNC found a local broker for me before I had a chance to. Otherwise, I would have to face fines from the US government. Unfortunately, my container was flagged for an extra scan, which took another three days. After it cleared, the total broker fees and US taxes came out to 1647 cents. My broker was with a company called CTL. However, I do not recommend them since my paperwork was not filed correctly, which resulted in delay until additional information was provided to FDA. As you can see on the document, it shows the machine is operated as a laser cutter, which is not the case for milling. Getting these documents took another 10 days. Finally, on March 5th, I took delivery. I decided to rent a forklift and a flatbed truck for a day. I chose Enterprise because they were cheaper than Penske. 
and they came out to 10857 the cheapest I could find, and independent forklift for a forklift, which was 343 cents. This included a 5k pound payload, 8 feet fork, full tank of propane, and delivery and pickup. My first impression after opening the container was much better than I expected. The machine was in pristine condition and well protected. However, the corner of the container was smashed. Luckily, it only left a small dent in the front bumper of the machine, and it didn't hinder any of the important key parts. Since the machine came assembled, setting up was easy, unlike the extruded version, which could take days to assemble. All the settings come preset based on the model you order, which takes a lot of hassle out of your learning experience. However, after running a few tests, I needed to change a setting to allow the feed rate to be read directly from the G-code. Luckily, the salesperson created a group chat with one of their engineers that made everything very quick and painless. Here's a video of me showing the settings that are related to my machine. Everything on this machine is operated by this small device which controls everything from settings to operating the machine to reading files from the flash drive. I've used the shop bot before which required a computer to run that made it a lot harder to set the Z and the Y axis. The whole machine was operated by a computer program, which means if the computer crashed, the whole machine stopped and resulted in a ruined workpiece. But with this handheld device, there is no lag and ensures solid execution of the G-code. You can do many things such as pause or stop and save the workpiece, which can be resumed the next day exactly where it left off. Lastly, I want to go over the basic functions should you ever consider buying the machine. Double click OK to have the machine come back to the origin. Pressing any of the X, Y, Z buttons will manually move or position the spindle. Pressing the X, Y, 0 or Z, 0 will set the new origin. Press the on, off and the Z plus or the Z minus together to adjust the spindle speed. You have 8 options. Setting it to 1 will mean the spindle will not spin. Here's a quick table of the RPMs according to the setting. After generating the compatible file and inserting the flash drive, Press the Run button and choose U-Disk file by pressing OK. You can also access folders. Press the X- button to choose your file. This Home button is only to set home limits. There's a sensor on each axis that sets the limits of the machine. This is a mandatory procedure after restarting the machine. The Mode button allows you to choose to move the spindle continuously by step or a given distance. The High-Low button sets the manual speed at which the spindle moves. The on-off button manually turns the spindle on or off. The spindle automatically comes on when you run a file. The speed can also be adjusted on the fly. This device automatically sets the Z0. To set the Z0, place the device on top of your material or on the table. This will depend on your G-code. Then, press the on-off and menu button to get it to run the automatic setting. After the tilt touches the device, the Z0 will automatically be saved. If the Z0 does not set properly, you can adjust the thickness setting by measuring the device thickness. After, input the value by following these steps. This will ensure the Z0 will be correct next time you use it. In conclusion, the total cost of this machine involving any cost required to place it into my shop was $8,363.16. I strongly believe that this is the best value for your money. I was truly impressed with the quality, precision, and build of this machine. There are only a few minor issues. Number one, sometimes the oil drips from the rails. If this continues to be a problem, I can add a small gutter, but it would be nice if it was added as part of the machine. Second, the table was not perfectly flat, but it was an easy fix simply by running a surface bit all across the table. Lastly, the spindle speed doesn't automatically adjust to your G-code. You have to set it manually before you run your code. Otherwise, I'm very satisfied with my purchase. The product is truly the best based on its price. All of the mentioned companies, products, and references shown in this video are included in the comments section of this video. I hope you find this video helpful in your research. Thank you for watching.